What's up guys? Welcome back to the Team Soma Circus live video. Today we have something a little bit different. We have Dragon Link on the uh, downside here going up against Snake Eyes Beansmith. This is going to be the updated list. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We are back still on DV. Um, this is my buddy Josh playing this. A huge shout out. This is high rated, you know, 15 to 15, very high. Uh, we are going to be seeing the Dragon Link Beansmith deck going first here. Lots of different cards you guys can see. We are playing 45 versus 40 here. Uh, you know, we have a bunch of decks, or we should have a bunch of cards in here. I should say that, you know, make it so we want to have a little bit more consistency. We have a lot of bestials as well as like the gamma package alongside this. Having your feet and stuff, we can go over the 40 with alongside the chaos stuff as well. But we're going to be seeing the engraver. We're going to start off here. Uh, I should mention that we have engraver, the copy of collapse serpent, the copy of meteor burst, magnum, druis worm, and then we have the ash boss on the opponent's side, the track or the lurry here. The copy of Valor, Bonfire, and the copy of Witch. So having two hand traps and then a searcher, which is going to be making them able to search for the Poplar or the Ash, depending on which one they want uh, or need here. And they have a copy of Diabelsters, have the copy of Origins, so maybe go for that copy of Oak or Ash. Um, but we are going to be seeing here the track is going to get hit with a copy of Ash. They're going to go for the Red Eyes Meteor, sending the copy of Gamma or Driver to the Graveyard. We then get to banish the Driver to summon with a copy of Collapse Serpent, and we go up into a Moon. Still having access to those uh, Beesmith cards here. So we do see the copy of White being searched off the black. We go into the copy of the Requiem, going into the copy of the Engraver here. We see Engraver put back the Moon to summon itself out. And now we can go right up into a sequence or a copy of Caesar here. A very nice card. We go Magnumut on the target of the Meteor. And then we get Activity Effect to search. And we are thinking, thinking for a second here. We then go Druus Worm on the white and then we go into a copy of a tum here we go a tum and we're gonna valor this i don't even know what we summon uh yeah i mean <laughs> that's a weird one maybe we summon out a copy of uh of saferts or the red eyes maybe the uh black metal dragon then we just link that away for a copy of striker striker search being able to summon out bring back out a copy and then go into a seals perhaps I'm um, not exactly sure where we're going to go. We're going to go for the white dragon here, using the whole entire hand at this point, just to go up into a copy here of Seals. And so Seals, Baldrake, because we're going to see the Magnumet Resolve, as well as a Caesar, is going to be the end board here. And that's not going to be the greatest. We do see a copy of the Field Spell going to be activated, placing the copy of Oak. You know, we are on one Poplar, one Ash, one Oak, and now we have a trifecta of one ofs. Uh, kind of crazy how we see the deck kind of change, you know, with the ban list, bringing them all down to one. You know, at one point we were playing multiple copies of Flamberge. Uh, so even now, you know, potentially playing more Flamberges than anything else. Most likely just playing one Flamberge, though. It's just funny at the time. Uh, we do still have the Caesar, you know, being able to negate two cards here. Uh, it unfortunately cannot negate a uh, copy of Witch because it does not, like, activate the effect to summon. Uh, just inherently summons. But... We're going to be seeing here the Bonfire, searching for a copy of Snake Eyes Ash. A lot of players are pretty upset that this card is still at three. I could see this, you know, being put to one as well, maybe next list. It is in the Mega Tins. Uh, I think alongside of Wanted and the copy of Diabell Star. Therefore, you kind of want to make sure the tins sell a little bit. Uh, they can't just, like, hit all the cards and then make sure that we just don't. Uh, there's no, like, use for chasing in the tins. So it makes sense. I would assume that we're going to be seeing this hit next list. Uh, you know, it's a roller like effect. But we're going to be seeing a search for a copy of Snake Eyes Ash. We normal summon Snake Eyes Ash, activating the effect, searching for the copy of Poplar here. We then activate the effect of Poplar. We Caesar negate and destroy that. Then we summon a copy of Witch here, sending the copy of Lurie. We're going to go Witch effect, placing the OSS. And now we think of like, what does OSS have to summon? Uh, not very much, to be honest. You know, it has Oak in the Spell and Trap Card Zone. Maybe we should have put a copy of the. Uh, the Snake Eyes Diabell Star instead. So you could have the Oak being able to brought being able to be brought out by that copy of OSS, but maybe just something a little bit of misplay here. Um, but we're gonna go battle phase attack into the copy of Caesar here. And on the attack declaration, are we gonna activate the effect of seals? We might see it. We are gonna seals bounce back the copy of Ash to the hand. And then we're gonna go seals effect and we Caesar negate our own seals. Okay. 
not exactly sure why we do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we Caesar negate our own seals, we lose a body. We can't summon Magnemut. You know, I don't know. We summon out a safer. It's safer to be able to add back. Why do we not? We know they don't have talents. We know all the cards here. Is there a reason why we don't? Yeah, I got really no clue. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure here, but okay. We're going to be seeing some other facial card special one from your hand or deck. So we can summon the copy of Ash. And then we can't activate the Ash effect because we have only one poplar in the deck. We do activate the effect here to send some of the copy of Flame Burge. And now we go for the copy of. Yeah, we, we just go for C or we go for that we bring out two more bodies that can bring out the copy of poplar because we haven't used oak effect and yeah we're able to just kind of continue now I wonder why we ended up stopping our own seals but dive on to game two we are gonna be seeing skill drain black metal Soranir, Soranir, and a copy of the meteor burst not the greatest hand but we do have a one of which is gonna be pretty nice then we have a engraver, a track, so not opening up the greatest for themselves, but they are, are going to be able to search for a copy of um, the Lurie, which is going to be a summon. We have two hand traps here, being an imperm and a nib, and the copy of Temple. Uh, and of course, we do have a normal summon as well as a one hand trap if we were to go being going second. But we're going to be seeing a copy of Black Metal being normal summon, go for a copy of Striker Dragon, searching for the copy of Red MD here. And. We see Red MD being summoned, I find the effect summoned back out, not imperming or not bailing that. I mean, when you are playing a deck full of Vistules, maybe just not worth it, you know, wanting to hit maybe an impactful card, especially when you have Nib in the hand. We go for a Romulus, you know, Romulus is going to be able to search for a copy of Dragon Ravine, not hitting this either. We do summon out the copy of Black Metal by banishing the or Meteor by summoning out the copy of Driver. And then we go up into a copy of the Moon. Moon go up into a copy of Requiem here. And we're going to be seeing a Tasty Nib going to be dropped. We then go for the copy of the Engraver going into the copy of Princess. And we can then go Engraver put back to Summon. We then go Dragon Ravine. And this is Summon number 5, right? Or we're way past 5. So on the Summon of Dragon Ravine, or on the Dragon Ravine, Maybe it's just worth chaining Nib here. Because when Dragon Ravine is going to activate the effect, we're going to get an additional draw off the Princess. The next step is going to be a Caesar. But do we maybe just not care and just want to Caesar the entire, like Nib Caesar? We know they can only stop it once. So maybe they're trying to wait for the end of the turn and then try to Nib them and, you know, impermeating the Caesar. That could be a play here. We see the Sora near dump and we're going to be dumping the copy of Ravine. We're going to be going chain link one princess, chain link two Soranir, dumping the copy of Lubelion, and then be on the draw card. We then go right up into a copy of Caesar. Safer can then banish to add back the copy of Lubelion, getting us to search for the copy of the Magnemut here, which we are going to be seeing. And now we just have Magnemut, banish the black metal, activate the Magnemut effect, tag out for Lubelion, and here surely we just imperm nib, right? We don't want them to get the effect of Blue Belly on the field. Once they start to get regained, they'll be able to start summoning up the copies of Magnemut and search every single turn. So we are going to be seeing, yeah, we're going to be seeing Nib here chained. We chain Caesar. They negate that with Imperm, and then we see the entire board being wiped. Uh, kind of rough. We do go Soranir on the black, summon itself out. We go Baldrake on the driver, summoning itself out. And we're going to overlay into a copy of a Tum here. A Tum is going to summon out. Now we've already gone through Safer. We've already gone through Black Metal. What do we choose to summon here? Are we just trying to go for... No, because if we just wanted to go for Steel, we would just go for Seals prior. But I guess they could just go Battle Phase, Attack Over, and then not really commit anything to the board. But 
going to be seeing a Fallen of Albaz being summoned here. Okay, Albaz will then be able to activate the effect, sending the copy of Skill Drain, using itself to go up into a copy of the Albion. Albion can then banish the copy of Romulus and itself to go for a copy of the Mirror Jade. We can now link the Gatum and the copy of Albion to the Graveyard to go up into that copy here of the Seals. Then we can go Albion, set the Retribution, or set, set the copy of Regain, I'm assuming. Or Beast, sending copy of Beast and searching for the Ball Drake. We see during the standby phase, it flips the face up. We all know how that works. Now we're going to be most likely seeing the Ball Drake going, to, or I guess. So we have a few things we, we're looking at here. We also draw a copy of Talents for Turn. So we have the Ball Drake, which can then banish to summon at any point of time. We have Seals, which can also bounce to summon. Um, most likely going to be bouncing one of their cards that are going to be important, like a Snake Eyes Ash or a copy of Divine Temple. Something like that going to be kind of impactful. Uh, we have the Mirror Jay, which can send. We have the Ball Drake by being able to pop one of the cards by sending the copy of this token or whatever they summon off the seals. We also have the Beast pop the copy of Ball Drake as well. So you have multiple layers of interruption here, which is really nice. Um, we see Temple. This is most likely going to be hit with the copy of seals, bouncing it back to the hand and summoning out a copy of Druish Worms. So having another form of interruption by being able to send that with the copy of Baldrake. Um, and then keeping the beast live immediately as well if you want to. You know, you can always just go like uh, whatever they summon. They can go beast, pop, Druish Worm. If they have two bodies on the field, sending both of them can be quite nice. But we're going to be seeing a Talents to take. And that's going to take most likely the Mirror Jade. I feel like you probably should have took the Druus Firm here because, I mean, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Like, you're going to get... Yeah. We see them just admit defeat here, knowing the game is going to be too uh, too far gone. No matter what they do, you know, they have two bodies on the field now, so when they do summon out a body or commit to the board, we are going to be able to go Beast, pop the Druus Firm, and then Druus Firm going to be able to send the other card, uh, which is quite nice. But we are going to be seeing a Game 3... We see Druus Ram, Phantasme, Engraver, Copy Lubellion, and a Mole Charmy. And then we see Anti Spell, drawing the one of, just like we did see the Fiendsmith, Dragon Link player, you know, drawing the copy of Skill Drain, drawing the copy of Anti Spell here. Bonfire, Imperm, so having that one hand trap, and then the copy of Poplar and Baldrake. So having kind of two hand traps here, and then a starter as well as a Bonfire. Now, Bonfire is not going to be as strong because we do have the copy of Poplar in the hand. You know, being able to search for a copy of Oak and the copy of Snake Eyes Ash is not going to do anything for them essentially going to be a brick because we did open the poplar if we didn't open up poplar it obviously could be able to search for snake eyes ash or the copy of poplar depending on when we had in the hand but you know this is kind of like the issues now where you do see some of those harder bricks or softer bricks in the deck being these two but we're going to be seeing most likely multi being dropped here and then phantasma going in hard at some point but we're going to be diving on in we see multi being dropped in the draw or standby phase and they are going to think here we're normal someone to copy poplar getting one draw here automatically off this a lot of the times they're going to be having multiple draws you know with the copy of ash poplar uh snake eyes fiendsmith if we i mean we're not going to summon snake eyes fiendsmith with this but we have the witch as well which can get us a draw so having like two to three draws with this can be quite nice but we see the poplar search for the copy of oss oss can activate the effects so the copy of poplar is coming up with the copy of oak Oak is going to activate the effect, bringing out the copy of Poplar here. We did draw into the copy of Baldrick as well. So now we have Baldrick, Druid Serum, as well as the copy here of the Phantasme as a uh, hand trap ish life effect. We're going to go for a Link Summon into a copy of the Elinquished Anima. We're going to put Poplar back in the Spell and Trap Guard zone. Oak can then send itself. And on the summon, we're going to be seeing, of the Anima, we're going to be seeing a Phantasme here. Uh, I feel like we may be rolling a little bit too quick. But we'll just check there. Yeah. They did say thinking here. So that's fine. You know, they are thinking and then they decided to activate an effect right after. You know, it is literally the second after they summon, they say thinking or they press the thinking button and they declare the effect. So they were clearly thinking. I don't think that's any like in mission tent there. Uh, you definitely got to wait for your opponent to, uh, you know, say okay. At that point because I guess like are they gonna be something like another body here you know for a link two, or is like this gonna be the best time to draw to be able to maybe see those hand traps uh, so we're gonna be seeing 
the copy of Phantasme. We draw into a black metal and a copy of white. Most likely going to be putting back, I don't even know what you put back here. Maybe putting back the copy of white. Yeah. Then we see an oak send itself plus poplar, send a copy of flame bridge. And that's going to be fine. We're going to go up into a copy of moon. And then we're going to be seeing the flame bridge act for the effect, bring out the copy of oak as well as poplar here. And we go into the Requiem, I reckon this was some of the copy of Engraver. And like this point, we're going to be making sure they do not have access to those uh, bestials at all. Or actually, the bestials are going to be making sure we have no access to any of those Fiendsmith cards at all here. We're going to most likely see a sequence being made the next play. But Seek is going to activate the effect, and we're going to chain a copy of the bestial here, getting rid of that Engraver, guaranteed. So we're going to be seeing the Baldrake being chained and the Jerusalem being chained as well on the Requiem and Engraver here. We chain the Baldrake on the Engraver ourselves, making it so that's just the Jerusalem summon so we don't have another interruption in sending the Baldrake. Uh, quite nice here. This is going to make it so that we can summon out the Princess and then we're going to be able to also uh, not lose our Princess. We have to summon out Princess here, which brings out the copy of the... Uh, Brings out the copy of the Flame Bridge, and if we don't, and we let that copy of Baldrick resolve, the moment we summon up the Princess, Baldrick is going to be sent, or sending a copy of either Phantasmate or the copy of Jewish from the Graveyard, depending on what they have left on the board. You know, if we didn't know they had this in the hand, we would not send the copy of the Jewish Room, but we're going to sending a one to essentially cut off their turn altogether, which would be kind of brutal. So we have to summon another copy of Baldrick here, and then we draw another card off the Mulcharmy, drawing a copy of Phantasmate, not looking the greatest here. We go into a Princess. Princess can then bring out the copy of Flame Burge. And we can just link those two off to go into a copy of Hita. We then go Flame Burge to put the copy of Baldrick in the Spell and Trap card zone. And we set three and pass turn on this. Uh, so we have the copy of Princess being able to pop the Flame Burge or the copy of Hita. We have Flame Burge being able to bring out the copy of the Baldrick. But Baldrick is not going to be that much of an interruption though. Because it doesn't. we don't have any lights or dark access at all. Um, we do have a protection with the copy of Phantasme. They do have Imperm and the copy of Anti Spell as well. But let's see how this goes. We see Anti Spell being flipped face up. Now, <laughs> this hand, we do not care. You know, handful of monsters. Oh, well, they're going to think here. And we're going to be seeing a Safer being normal summoned. We activate the effect, searching for most likely a copy of the Dark Dragon. Uh, we then get to activate the effect of Dark Dragon, banishing the copy of the. Uh, the safer going up into the copy of striker dragon searching for a copy of white so we can now link away for an sp summon of sp is going to be okay so no judgment here but we do see a copy of princess being activated and that's going to be targeting the flame burge and the sp we're going to chain the copy of Phantasme here. We're going to chain Flame Burge on the copy of Baldrake. No response. We're going to see Baldrake being summoned and we send the copy of Hida. So I did misplay that there. Um, I guess we see SP target the Flame Burge. Um, whatever. The Jerusalem target the copy of Hita. Uh, and then we see uh, in response, we saw the princess there. Target the copy of SP. We chain the copy of Phantasme, send in the copy of this, and we chain the copy of the uh, the Phantas or not Phantasme, but the Flame Bird, send in the copy of Baldrick here. Makes so that we do not die. Now we just have an Imperm left. We can't attack directly this turn, which is not going to be that much of a problem. We go for the Lubellion, searching for the copy of Magnumut. Now, if you ask me, I think this game is pretty much over. So we do see the Magnumut on the sequence here. Yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for them. We're cutting off their copies of Engraver here. We have no Requiem. We have no Sequence. Uh, the Moon's not going to be doing anything ever. Not going to be really put back into the extra deck at all. You're going to have to hard draw a copy of the Engraver to do that. That's going to be quite difficult for us to do as well. Uh, we see Bonfire doing absolutely nothing here. Being able to search for Snake Eyes Ash, but it's not going to do anything because we already have Poplar and Oak in rotation. And the Flame Bird just banished. Uh, we have an Imperm, which is not going to really be able to stop that much. Maybe we should have Imperm the copy of SP Little Knight or the copy of Prince uh, Phantasme, but even then, it's still like kind of hard. We see Magnumut being able to activate the effect searching. We see then Lubellion, and that's going to resolve searching for or placing the copy of Regained onto the field here. 
we summon with the copy of the uh, White Dragon by banishing the Dark, which can then regain, can then put back, and then letting us draw additional card. And at this point, we can just see where the snowballing effect has kind of gone through. That we have essentially infinity bodies we're going to be able to search every single turn. Whenever they summon a monster, we're going to be able to summon with a copy of Magnemite, being able to search again for the end phase. We have the copy of Baldrick, which can send. And like we have just so much we can do. Our opponents can be on top decking mode with an Imperm. Now, obviously, the Imperm should have been used, but there's nothing really they can do to draw. And the next turn, we're going to be able to OTK. Looking here, we have many bodies as well that we can go into the copies of the Fiendsmith stuff. Uh, you know, we have one engraver in the graver, which can allow us to have access to um, a Caesar line. We do see as well the SP here kind of blocking the zone. So maybe they should have changed something to it. But whenever the imperm was going to be activated there, we probably would have changed the SP there uh, as well. So getting rid of that would most likely be the problem. We do see here that the Dragon Link's Fiendsmith deck is able to take the win. You know, having those Mertz armies as well as the draws off the... Uh, the Phantasme definitely helped the deck quite a bit, being able to customize their hand, getting those copies of the Bestials at the hand with the Fiendsmith stuff. And this is kind of like the, the point of the ban list, which I want to be showing you guys out the uh, the Snake Eyes deck. Sorry, I'm losing my voice recording a bunch of different duels today. Uh, but we see like Oak, Poplar, and Ash, like all now being one ofs. Maybe we're going to be seeing Oak bump up to two. I doubt that we'll see that, but like Bonfire being in your hand plus a copy of Poplar, like essentially just makes it so that it's absolutely nullified like you're having a blank in the hand which is gonna do absolutely nothing um now you do have some discards sometimes if you are playing like different copies of cards like the nightmare package you can maybe discard that as well uh but like here there's not much that we can really do you know it's unfortunate for us that we do see the deck still going to be played obviously it's going to be one of the better decks especially once the azarune cards come out or the azamine cards uh, but for now it's still gonna be one of the top meta contenders i think that you bell is probably a little bit better right now but Regardless, hope you enjoyed watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to see more content like this. Stay safe. Peace.